All right, folks, it's Sunday, and this is not the kind of topic that I would usually cover on this channel, but, um, <clears throat> you know, we got a holiday tomorrow. I feel like there's enough of a break in the news that I can justify going off the rails for a bit, perhaps becoming unhinged, um, because this is something that I just, I, I, I have to talk about it. Um, Starfield is, a, a, and its implications, its potential legacy, are a disaster for not the gaming industry, but the uh, the public, the consumer. The precedent being set here is worse than uh, a lot of what we've seen in 2023 because it's different. Um, the narrative surrounding gaming in 2023 was that, yes, games were becoming artificial unnecessarily demanding that the uh, the performance decrease in games has not been justified by the increase in graphical fidelity. Personally, I, I'm someone who remembers when there used to be quantum leaps uh, from one console generation to another. And frankly, in the last 10 years, I have not seen, by my eye, I don't notice that much of an increase, but I know that the demands on hardware, the amount of electricity that, one, that, a, that a machine must consume to render uh, these modern graphical marvels has increased exponentially. Games from 10 years ago will run at a solid 60 FPS on an iPhone. <laughs> But these modern games uh, can't seem to break 30 FPS on, uh, well, frankly, on the newest on the newest consoles or on decent gaming PCs from just a couple years ago. Hell, they they're not doing it on really high end gaming PCs from a couple years ago or mid range PCs from this year. And to me, what this looks like is a racket to sell more hardware. This is beyond the whole VRAM debate. I mean, earlier this year, uh, we figured out that gaming developers are making are are slacking off on optimization by just increasing the VRAM usage to the point where eight gigabytes of VRAM, which has always been a lot, um, I mean, going back to like 2016, eight gigabytes of VRAM was a lot, and it's always been. Um, plenty even at 4k resolutions it's been plenty sufficient then all of a sudden in, in you know in uh 2023 we had resident evil and jedi survivor and the last of us um two out of those three games by the way are just remakes re-releases of older games that ran on the xbox 360 and in the case of resident evil 4 wait wasn't resident evil 4 like a, a gamecube game I think it was a GameCube exclusive. Now that I think about it, uh, but uh, but anyway, these these games come out, and all of a sudden you have these cards with you know mid-range graphics cards, current generation graphics cards with eight gigabytes of VRAM, and the game won't even launch; it'll crash. <laughs> you know, and then we're told, oh well, they'll patch that out later. You know, I'm old enough to remember Sonic 06 back in 2006. That game was released; it was a buggy mess. <laughs> it. It could barely it could barely hold uh, 30 FPS and would cons it would frequently drop below that, and that was not considered okay. That was a stain. It was a black eye on Sega um, that they carry with them to this day. Sega is still considered a joke because of the mess that was Sonic 06 upon release. Yet that is now the industry standard. And okay, you know, you know, we first saw this. I think the the first big Sonic 06 level disaster um, in gaming was probably Cyberpunk 2077, and it took them like what three years, two years, maybe a year and a half at least to make the game playable after it was released. Okay, so maybe the new lesson is don't buy games at launch you just have to wait a year you know think of a, a launch these days as an early beta early access and if you want to actually play the game as the as intended you know in a fully functioning 
manner, um, you're going to need to wait like a year for them to actually finish the game because these companies release the games wanting to get the influx of cash from sales and then they use that money to finish developing the game. And when you consider how much, how much bigger a lot of these games are uh, than they used to be, you can kind of understand that. You can, you know, you can kind of justify it in your head. You say, you know what, I'm still paying $60 or these days more like 70 in the case of Starfield. Um, and I think a lot of these, I think Jedi Survivor was 70. I'm sure The Last of Us was 70. Knowing Capcom, Resident Evil was probably 70 plus 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 with all of their Capcom DLC. But Starfield is not like these other games, these three that I mentioned earlier in the year that just had high VRAM usage. And I think Jedi Survivor still has stupid high VRAM usage. Um, Starfield does not have that problem. Um, it does not have, from in all the footage that I've seen, and I've seen at this point hours of footage of Starfield running on different with different hardware, different, different CPUs, different GPUs, uh, and the RAM allocation and VRAM allocation does not seem particularly high. Most of the time, Starfield uh, is staying around 6 gigabytes, which means you could probably run it with, like, uh, a 2060 or even a 1060. I saw it running on a 1060. It wasn't a great experience, but it was playable. Um, and so, on the low end... On the lowest end, you could say, if you have everything turned down and you have FSR on, which FSR is on by default, uh, Starfield actually seems to not use a ton of VRAM. It's not. I haven't seen it crashing a bunch. I haven't seen a ton of ridiculous bugs. And the frame drops are not an issue. The game is not stuttery. It's not like dropping to 5 FPS. Um, it seems to be a stable. If you're at if you're at 30 FPS, it seems like a pretty stable 30 FPS. If you're at 40 FPS, it seems like a pretty stable 40 FPS. If you somehow are a rich man and you own a machine that is capable of running this game at 1080, 60 FPS, it seems fairly stable. And so this is very different from the stuttery um, VRAM intensive messes that have been released this year. This game seems to have a good deal of polish. But then you look at it and you look at the performance that you're getting versus the visuals and I can't help but think that this is anything but a scam. I mean, for one thing, Bethesda um, appears to have worked very closely with AMD to the detriment of anyone who doesn't own an AMD graphics card. AMD seems to be the only ones who have been able to um, uh, optimize their drivers to run this game. Intel uh, on launch was complete. like it, the, the game will not launch if you own an Intel GPU. Sorry, that's, that's apparently that's just that's just the way it is. Intel is only working on their drivers now. And for uh, NVIDIA, uh, their cards, which normally, you know, if you look at a comparable, uh, the NVIDIA card that is comparable to, you know, whatever AMD card, uh, let's say a, a 4070, or no, not 4070, uh, I think it's a, let me think what would be equivalent, like the 3070 Ti, or 3070, just straight 3070, versus a 6700 XT. Those are two comparable cards from AMD and NVIDIA. The AMD card, and no matter which one you pick, the comparable AMD card is uh, significantly outperforming the NVIDIA card. Uh, and in the case of the 7900 XTX, which is NVIDIA's flagship model, that is their, uh, I don't know, what is it, $1,500 or something, you know, $1,200? I don't know. Once you get up that high, I don't even follow the prices. But... <clears throat> Uh, it is typically considered to be well below a, a NVIDIA's flagship, which is the RTX 4090. Yet in this game, the 7900 XTX is massively outperforming the 4090. 
Now, this sort of uh, trickery um, wouldn't be such a bad thing for consumers uh, if over 80% or 80, is it, maybe it's as high as 87% or something of people are working off of an NVIDIA graphics card. So I don't mind from a comp competition standpoint that AMD is getting the jump on NVIDIA. I don't mind that at all. I don't, I don't like NVIDIA as a company. I think I've made that clear on this channel even. But I do care about the 87-some percent of consumers who, either because they chose to buy an NVIDIA product or because they bought a computer that happened to you know, have an NVIDIA chip in it, and they don't even know what that is. They just know, oh, you know, oh I bought a computer that's supposed to be for playing games, and um, it happens to be made by NVIDIA. I don't see why they should be getting screwed. I don't see why Bethesda appears to have worked to sabotage owners of especially Intel cards, um, but also NVIDIA. I mean, it's a, it's a, it seems pretty clear. But let's get to the elephant in the room, which is that no matter what cards you're using, you're not getting good performance out of this game. A high-end GPU is getting barely 60 FPS at this point in this game at 1080p. And this is supposed to be some high-end next-gen, ooh, super flashy, very immersive game, that you, the kind that you would want to play at like 4K. And 60 FPS is a struggle at 1080p. Now on the Xbox, this game is locked to 30 FPS, which from what I've seen, 30 FPS in this game, it, it doesn't look very good. I. I I don't know how else to say it. I don't know if Bethesda plans on improving how the game runs and then raising the, the frame cap on the Xbox later, but 30 FPS I don't think is uh, super enjoyable. I would just say it's playable. It looks playable, uh, especially depending on the whatever difficulty setting you have it set on. If you have it set on easy, it probably won't be a big deal. Um, but if you want to go at like a higher, you know, higher difficulty, um, whatever the Bethesda equivalent of like Ultra Nightmare, uh, this game does not have vats. It is not Fallout. You need to be able to aim. You can't just freeze frame and then click on where you want to shoot your gun. You have to actually do the aiming. And so 30 FPS, especially if you try and move, you try and move your mouse or your look, look around with your using your control stick or whatever if you're on an Xbox, that's going to be very, very choppy. I mean... I frankly, I think you move, you know, you move too much at 60 FPS in, in a first-person game. It, it can look, uh, it can be a little sketchy. But even though this game does not have the weaknesses of these other 2023 titles, it is not acceptable to release a product like this that looks the way that it does, that looks fine, but does not look amazing. It's not hyper photo, it's not photorealistic or anything like that. Um, you know, it does not seem to be. Uh, the most impressive looking game in history. It looks like, frankly, it looks like a lot of other Bethesda games. Um, I, if, if you've played Bethesda games uh, since at least like Morrowind going back to there, they kind of all have that weird look. Um, I'm not saying it's bad, uh, especially like the people. I always thought the NPCs are rather uncanny. They still have that unsettling uh, look about them. Uh, when I when I look at this game versus uh, an older Bethesda game, and not not super old. I, I mean, I think it was like their mass their last major release was Fallout 4, and this does not look significantly better. But Fallout 4 will run on uh, I I mean almost anything. If you have a computer that's less than 10 years old probably will run Fallout 4 just fine at the highest settings. And that certainly w would also go for the Xbox. The current Xbox, that is. I don't know if the, uh, at the time when Fallout 4 released, I guess it would have been the Xbox One. I don't know how, I don't know if Fallout 4 was uh, what the frame rate looked like on, uh, and what the, uh, the, the graphics settings were like uh, on the Xbox version. 
But if the um, if the demands of the games industry is that if we want a uh, a game that will run properly, uh, that we just have to spend more on hardware every year. I mean, even if you bought a brand new graphics card this year, that's not good enough. Uh, the uh, I, I, if you look at something, the performance of something like an RTX 4060 that just came out this year, it's a brand new graphics card. Uh, and it's a 60 class, which is normally like fine. You know, I mean, if you go back four generations to the RTX or to the GTX 1060, you bought one of those back in 2016 or whenever they came out, 2017. Um, you would want to look at an upgrade now, but until now, you you didn't need to upgrade that. It worked fine for all these years, five six years. That's how long it got you by. Uh, an RTX 4060, on the other hand, that you bought in uh, when did it launch? April? It's already obsolete. You're not playing Starfield with a with a 4060. It doesn't. It just doesn't work. Not not very well. Uh, 1080p. Uh, low. I'm trying to remember what the exact numbers were on low. I think it was only. I think it was in the 40s, from what I saw. I mean, you're not hitting 60 FPS on 1080 low. With a brand new, you know, not a not a low end. This is not the low end. It's not entry level. You know, uh, uh, allegedly this is not an RTX 4050. Interestingly, we don't have an RTX 4050. But if we did, I would think it would look a lot like the RTX 4060. But that's a debate for the for another day. But just taking them at their word, you look at the you look at the 4060. This is their, um, you know, entry level current generation. Meaning, you know, okay, sure, you, maybe you're not going to run 4K Ultra with ray tracing on. Um, but you want to be able to run new games, which is why you buy a new computer with a new graphics card. Uh, you want to be able to run the latest games well. You don't want to be able to just launch it. You don't want it set to slideshow mode. You want, you are buying this card to actually use it. And in Starfield, it's not usable, like most other cards. If you have a, uh, you know, in a, a, a 3090, so that was, uh, what were those? Were they like $1,600 or something? $1,200 when they launched? Uh, not that long ago, like a year or two ago, or a couple years ago now. Yeah, because the 4090's been out. Well, no, I mean, it was still current gen until the 4090 came out. The 4090 came out... Late 2022, I think. If you've got a 4090, that's a that's a 1440p card. <laughs> that it just is. It is no longer 4K. You could have bought a 3090 last year. You get Starfield, you're not going to run it very well 4K. I mean, you can do it with upscaling, but 4K native Ultra, nope, no way. And so, is the lesson here that? Um, if you want to be able to play the video games that are released in this, you know, in this current market, um, do you just buy a new $1,500 graphics card every year, year and a half? And when you do that, inevitably, you'll have to, you know, in order to keep up with that high end of graphics card, you'll actually need to upgrade your CPU. That's another thing I haven't talked about with this game. It's incredibly CPU intensive. It seems that even a 5800X3D which last I checked is like a $250 CPU even now. Um, that's That seems to be becoming obsolete because it's not enough to keep up in this game. And so will this game get better? I, I, don't, I don't see it getting a whole lot better because uh, look at, I mean, where, where are they gonna cut? Are they gonna cut from RAM usage? RAM usage doesn't seem to be bad. VRAM usage doesn't seem to be bad. Uh, you know, other than that, how do you how do you optimize your game? I'm not a game dev. I don't know how to optimize the game. That's Bethesda's job. It's not mine. Is this an optimization problem? I don't know. All I know is whether you have uh, an Xbox or a PC. And notice, I keep saying Xbox or PC. Of course, it's not going to be on Switch because, well, the audience for these kinds of games isn't really on Switch. But even a PlayStation, you're not getting this game. Because apparently, I guess Microsoft bought the company, so there's that. And so what I keep seeing here is that 
these game devs who put the most amount of money in developing these games, the more they the, the more money they put into a game, the smaller the potential audience or the potential customer base they have. The smaller the group of people who actually um, are qualified to buy it. Because if you want to um, buy this game at all, you need either a fairly recent, and, or I shouldn't say fairly, a very recent gaming PC just to play the game at all, um, or an Xbox, uh, a, an Xbox Series X. I would not recommend this for an Xbox Series S. It's, it's not based on what I'm seeing, that you need you need all the power you can get. <laughs> Xbox Series X, uh, if it has any advantage performance-wise, and I don't know that it does, but um, other than resolution, I don't know. But um, assuming that it has more power than a Series S, because I don't know anything about Xbox, um, you probably don't want to go with the lower end one because the the Series X is is, gonna, is struggling big time with this game. You know, 30 FPS is a struggle. If a game has to be locked at 30 FPS, it's not running well. Your hardware is is working overtime. And so, in order to run it well, you need a uh, you need a a four figure gaming PC in order to run the game properly, as you know, as intended. Um, and that does not that's not a lot of people that own that. And so, that's why I wonder who do they expect to buy these games? A lot of people are going to buy Starfield, download it, which takes a long time because it's a massive game launch into it for the first time they're going to play the first hour or so you know down in a cave from what i understand that's why you start out and the game runs pretty well down there because there's not a lot going on and then you come out from out of the cave you blast off into space you land in some city and your frame rate's going to drop to like 20 fps and you're going to go holy crap i can't play this game and they're going to return it now here's the problem i think this the way the steam refund works is that uh if you you can't go over two hours once you've played two hours of a game, uh, you're screwed. You can't return it. If people take their time in the beginning of the game and they have two hours logged on the game before they get to the city where their frame rate is going to drop um, exponentially, it's going to drop like a rock. I'll say exponentially, that's probably a little bit of hyperbole. But it's going to drop like a rock. And then they're going to go, crap, I can't run this. This is not playable. And they're going to be stuck with the game. So maybe we won't even know uh, all the returns that they could have been or should have been. But I'll tell you with, uh, with my hardware, which is decently, <laughs> I think, decently high-end. Or not high-end by today's standards. But I mean, it's in terms of the percentage of people, you look at uh, what is still the most popular graphics card in the uh, in, the world according to the steam hardware server it's a gtx 1650. that's what a normal person has to play a video game with they're not spending two thousand dollars to play video games that's not reasonable we used to call that like an enthusiast class because these are different classes there's not a normal person who is spending uh two thousand dollars so they can play a seventy dollar game a normal person wants to pay like you know four hundred dollars for a console um, or a PC, and they want to be able to play their 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 little video games. That's it's fun, you know. For most people, spending two thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, even a thousand dollars, which in this today a thousand dollar PC not running Starfield very well. Uh, so if you spend a thousand dollars on your PC. Uh, don't expect Starfield to really work for you. So this doesn't make sense. You know, we're told, you know, we're told with these things, oh, well, they're making them for future hardware. You know, these games are getting released now, but these are next-gen games. They're for the hardware that hasn't been developed yet. So they're they're just baking into the cake that, you know, so who are they making for? They're making for a market that doesn't exist. They're making it for people who own computers and game consoles that don't exist yet. That's stupid. That's not how you make products. Because the people of the future can't buy a game today for them to enjoy five years from now. Who who wants to pay seventy dollars now uh, to have a game in your Steam library or on your shelf, you know, in your Xbox collection? Although that 
let me get back to that in a minute. Who wants to pay, you know, seventy dollars for a Steam game now that you won't be able to play very well and uh, for like five years? When five years from now you can just wait for the Steam summer sale and buy that same game for five dollars. There's no incentive to buy these games when they're full price if you can't pay, if you can't play them, and people are going to get tired of it, and you're going to have another video game crash like you had in the 80s. But anyway, getting back to the Xbox problem, um, you buy it for a console, it's only good for that co that specific console. Once you go to the new generation, I mean, sure you have backwards backwards compatibility, but the game most of the time is not going to run better. At least not significantly better. Not like you have on PC where you can just, you know, oh, I, you know, this game from five years ago that I could barely play at 1080 low then, you know, now things have progressed enough I can run it at 4K Ultra. Usually don't have that kind of flexibility uh, with a console. But anyway, did I mention this game is not on PlayStation? So that is another market that they have cut themselves off from. So uh, the average gaming PC, no go for this uh, for this game. You just don't buy Starfield. Don't do it. There's, you're not gonna. You're not gonna have a fun time. Um, PlayStation owners, you can't. You don't have the option to buy the game. It doesn't. It's not for you. Uh, Switch owners, of course, which there wouldn't be a big audience for this on Switch. But hey, Red Dead Redemption just got or two. Just got finally ported to Switch. Um, so. Hey, there's a lot of people who own the Nintendo Switch, and if you're someone who, you know. You don't have enough money to buy five different machines to play to play silly video games. If all you have is a Switch because you go like, well, I like Mario and Zelda, and you know, maybe I'd buy these other games, but they're not available to me. Uh, that is a market. There are people there who, some, who would buy the game and contribute to sales. Not happening. So PlayStation and Switch off the table. Uh, uh, low to mid-range PCs off the table. Who's left? High, high-end PCs and enthusiast class PCs, and then the Xbox, uh, the what is it? Xbox Series X. Like I already said, low the low end, the Xbox Series S. I don't, I, 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 I wouldn't want to see this game running, <laughs> running on that console. Uh, and even on the Series X, it's not going to be running at 4K. I know that the Series X is supposed to be 4K, and the the Series S is supposed to be like 1440. Not happening. Maybe that will change with FSR 3.0, but I have not heard any news about FSR 3 coming to Starfield. Uh, I mean, my first thought when I first saw this game was this game should not have launched before FSR 3. It needed FSR 3 because it does not work. And it doesn't work in a completely different way than uh, the other games that didn't work of 2023. It is a whole new level of not working because the game's not stuttery. It's consistent. It's not overloading the machines. It is allocating the correct amount of resources uh, for the hardware. It's not overwhelming the hardware. It, it's dealing. It's taking whatever card it has and whatever you know CPU and all these things that it's dealing with RAM, and it's not overloading them. It's only allocating enough resources that those that the hardware can handle and process. And so you're not seeing massive frame spikes or frame drops from what I've seen. Okay, so I, I did not buy the game because I don't. It wouldn't run well on my hardware, um, so I'm not buying it. Uh, but from all of the footage I've seen, which is hours at this point, the game seems to run consistently poorly. And if this is the future of gaming, if Starfield is the future, then I think uh, game devs don't have a very bright future ahead because. And the same thing goes for the hardware developers. People, other than NVIDIA, who has non-gaming customers, you know, they can deal with the AI industry, okay. So NVIDIA might be fine. Uh, but the Xbox is not going to be fine if this continues. Um, people who make, you know, gaming PC hardware, not going to be okay. AMD is not going to be okay. Um, Intel Arc will be DOA. And we will go into a time similar to the video game crash of the 80s where people just said, you know, F this, I'm done. You're putting out too much garbage. That's what killed the video game industry in the 80s. It was shovelware. It was games that didn't work. It was games that weren't fun. It was games that were too, that was just, it, it was the same thing over and over and it was not, it was stagnant. Starfield 
might be a fine game if it ran properly. But there's nothing that I've seen that is revolutionary or amazing uh, to justify this, uh, this lack of performance. And they are not the only problem, obviously. This is an industry-wide problem. So with that said, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.